Hello friends and welcome back to another episode of our VGC 2020 Battle Series. It's getting weird to say that. I was so used to saying 2019 Battle Series. It just has a better flow, doesn't it? 2020 Battle Series doesn't seem as well. But I'm sure in a year's time it'll feel alright. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and we're going to be continuing on with this team that we kicked off when we started the series back up yesterday. So it is consisting of Kyoga, Tapakoko, Rayquaza, Incineroar, Tornadus, and Cartana. The team, as always, is down in the description as a raw paste and a poker paste. And um, you can check it out and try it out. And if you do try it out, do let me know what your thoughts are on the team. But without further ado, let's just hop straight back into it today. And as always, if you do enjoy this sort of content, please remember to drop a like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content and uh, leave your comments down below. Um, let's hop over to the right screen because uh, the rankings all reset. Let's go with leader, Lissandra. Uh, we haven't had this one in a while. Uh, it was obviously, it is actually Sheffield Regional this weekend. I'm pre recording these, so it's actually happening right now. Um, so hopefully everyone's had fun. We'll discuss the team, uh, the winning team, probably on the stream this week. As I said in yesterday's episode, we're back streaming on Thursday this week over on Twitch. So if you'd like to um, come over there on Thursday evening, 8 pm UK time, uh, it'll be a lot of fun to hang out with you and we'll play some Pokemon, talk about Sheffield Regional, what to expect for the rest of the Ultra series, and uh, we'll delve into some different archetype that we're playing at the minute. But we've got a first opponent of the episode, so we'll hop straight over into Team Preview. Okay, so our first pawn today is running a team spicy, spicy. We've got Curum White, we've got Incineroar, Salamence, Snileago, Dawnwings, Necrozma, and Tapu Lele. So we've got that combination straight away. We identify the Tapu Lele, Dawnwings, Necrozma. It's likely, and I'll always say this, to be Scarfed Lele when you see it with Dawnwings because of that fast offensive pressure that you've got there. A good way for us to detect that is always going to be playing Tapu Coco because we'll be able to overwrite their terrain with ours. Um... Uh, what are we going to do? We're going to need, uh, probably Incineroar here is really quite good just to deal with the Ultra Necrozma, although it does make it difficult. I mean, a Tailwind is probably going to be better and more useful than anything else. So I'm going to lead Tabacoco Tornadus here. Uh, Kyogre is going to be relatively good. Uh, Cortana is actually really good in this match. If we can get a Tailwind up, uh, we'd have to watch out a little bit for Salamence. Um, are we going to miss Rayquaza if we don't bring it? That's the question. And I really don't think we are. I'm going to bring Cartana. I think Cartana can be a bit of a star of a show here. So let's click in. With it. And let's get into this one. So good luck to my opponent. Um, I really love Cartana. And <clears throat> if I can speak in my voice, doesn't go. I really love Cartana in the Ultra Series. I don't think it's played enough. We did see a little bit of spike in usage around uh, US Nationals. Or oh, not the... International Championships, North America, the official name of that tournament. Um, but yeah, I think uh, it's a very, very good Pokemon still. And uh, I'd like to see more players trying it out. Hopefully, after if you watch these, you do try it out for yourselves. It might not be your cup of tea, but then again, um, it might be. So we're going to see Salamence. We're going to see Curum White come out for my opponent. Uh, we do have the Ferium on Tapu Koko, so we can straight away go for the nuke on something if we want. Uh, I'm kind of tempted to go for the restricted here over Salamence. Salamence isn't really putting too much pressure on. Let's twinkle tackle the Curum. And do we taunt the Salamence? We talked about it in yesterday's episode where maybe it's better to, to, to taunt it first and then go for our Tailwind second. So, I mean, completely limiting their ability to utilize their speed control rather than matching it, waiting for it to, to run out and in that time trying to get rid of that speed control set. So I'm going to taunt it here. Uh, it's likely a protect as well. Kieran, I'm going to actually switch out what comes in. What's going to take? Oh, the fairy. Okay, we're going to see Incineroar come in. I mean, it's not ideal, but it's it's not the worst, is it? Uh, Salamence might protect here with this kind of play that you see my opponent coming in with the Incineroar here. So they've got the fake out the next turn uh, to stop our taunt from the Tornadus. Uh, now we're not going to see that, so we will get our taunt off into the Salamence. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to pick up the knockout onto Incineroar, and we could have potentially got the knockout onto Salamence, but then it didn't really make much sense going for the double into Salamence, it, it would have left Curum White open, so you kind of got to cover bases the whole time when you're playing in VGC, I think that's a big thing, 
where you don't leave yourself too open to maybe a protect here or there. Uh, we're just going to see a hyper voice. Interesting move selection for my opponent. Probably seeing the taunt come from a mile off, and that's the reason why. Um, so I think what we can do here is we can go for our own tailwind. Uh, we could just double protect though. Um, I mean, we could dazzling gleam, and we could just go tailwind as well. We're gonna get faked out on something, but as long as we get like, if we don't get the tailwind, we get the dazzling gleam, um, and I'm pretty confident that both my Pokemon are gonna be able to take a hyper voice, or maybe Tornadus won't take a double edge. We're not gonna see any sort of fake out come out from my opponent, so it's likely the Incineroar is attacking. The dazzling gleam damage is always gonna be really appreciate it onto the salamence there as we do see the double edge into the tornadoes and it's likely we're going to lose both our pokemon here if a flare blitz comes out from this incineral oh it's a u-turn okay that's better for us um and what comes in it does give us a free switch into kyoga or cortana here though so depending on what comes in that will make a mind up maybe Oh, maybe it's better just to bring in Kyogre here and Water Spout and Dazzle. Keep Cortana in the back. Because the thing with Cortana is it kind of forces in the Incineroar. And we, if we had Kyogre out in the field in, in place of Tapu Koko, I'd, I wouldn't mind that so much because we're kind of checking the Incineroar coming in. Uh, the thing is now we need to, to make as much use of our win turns as possible water spout and dazzle it's going to be touch and go whether it gets a cure on like water spout's going to do a nice chunk of damage dazzling gleam it's going to do decent damage to cure him, but i don't know whether the combination will be strong enough it might be i don't know it depends on the build and if any of you are wondering i've got like this little mark it looks like i've got like a bottom of a black eye but it's not. Um, Thea decided it would be a lot of fun to suck my cheek. And she's giving me like this hickey on my cheek. And it's like I've got this black eye like someone's hit me. Now a single target water spout I think probably gets this cure I'm now. I would feel confident from this range. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to be able to probably close this one up pretty quickly now. We've got our tailwind active. We've got to contend with. Uh, Incineral coming in obviously with fake out so that's something to think about at least for this next turn but we're still going to have at least one turn of Tailwind after that and it is going to be the Necrozma um, hmm. which I don't mind really at all uh, I think the most important thing for us to do here is, is protect Coco see what the Storm Wings goes for the only issue is if this Dawn Wings is it gonna it, will it have Trick Room? I don't think it will. I think it's Ultra Necrozma. I really do. I'm gonna protect Coco regardless here, and I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna go Water Spout. I don't know whether it's the right decision. Maybe it would be probably better just going Double Protect here. Um, Fake out into Kyogre, yeah, makes sense. And Trick Room. Oh, Earth Power. It's into Coco anyway. So here we go. There's a, a last turn of um, Trick Room. And what I'll do, because I do suspect that it is Ultra Necrozma, especially with the Lele in the team, I'm going to just Water Spout. I'll switch Coco out, keep it for later on, in case we do need it. In case things get a little bit disastrous, but obviously not going to happen. So got another full fit. Very good game to my opponent. And uh, we're we're off to a really nice start this week. I know we're low ladder at the minute, and uh, but it it makes a lot of difference from uh, the roulette series that I keep referring to. I keep referring back to it because winning in the roulette series was the hardest thing, literally the hardest thing. If you want a Pokemon challenge, come see me. I'll spin the wheel for you, and um, we can create a team that you can try and win with on the ladder and I've always said it it's it's a lot more difficult at the end of a season when we were doing it and it's not to big myself up at all um, but I will say when everyone's played a format for a long time at the end of a season they've always got 
very well built teams and that's what makes it a lot more difficult but we did alright the last couple of weeks in the series we did really well we did I think the second to last week was the best one um, and we had an incredible record I can't remember off the top of my head it was like 9-2 nine, nine or something like that I think but it, yeah it ended up really good and it was a lot of fun along the way so um, we're just looking for our next opponent hopefully it doesn't take too long um, and I could cut this out, but it gives me the opportunity to talk to you guys about a lot of the stuff that's been happening. We've had lots of uh, Sword and Shield news recently that's come out, and Pokemon Masters has come out. It's uh, the mobile game. Um, I don't know how many of you are playing it at the minute, but I'm seriously addicted to it. I would do some content on it if I had the extra time. Um, it's such a cool game. It really is, and I've been really enjoying it and uh, just grinding through it at the minute. So, not finished all of the the uh, the challenges yet, but uh, I'm pretty close to. I think there's like 20, isn't there? And uh, I'm about 18. So, getting through them. But uh, let me know if you've been playing it, how you're getting on with it, and uh, what you like about it, or what you don't like about it. Um, but I'd imagine, getting back to Sword and Shield, we're going to have a nice flow of information, news, and uh, stuff about the games in the run-up to November, which is not very far away now. So it's only a couple of months away, really, until we get those games, which is very exciting, very exciting indeed. Um, and uh, it's going to be difficult, I think, Keeping this battle series going, even though it'll be relevant, uh, we'll probably cut this off around the time the Sword and Shield comes out and we'll start all the Sword and Shield content um, to the run of the season. So we might not have as much time. I can't believe I've just been sitting on that screen for it as well. For as long as I have been. Um, yeah, so we'll probably end up a daily battle series. We might keep it going on for like a week or two afterwards just so we've got that content there whilst we're getting to grips with Sword and Shield, building new teams, but then we'll, the, the transition will be pretty quick I think from um, going from Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, putting the DS away and then moving straight onto the Switch and plan on doing um, streaming a playthrough of Sword and Shield so that'll be a lot of fun. And, uh, and then doing a lot more content around Sword and Shield uh, going into the new season, well, the new part of the season on the 4th of January when the rules do change and I can't wait. I can't wait to get my hands on these new Pokemon and stuff like that. It is going to take a little bit longer than what I thought it would to find our first opponent. So I, I'll cut it here and we'll come back when we find our first opponent, well, our second opponent of the episode. So we'll be right back, my friends. And we've got our second opponent of the episode, we've got FB from Japan. So we'll hop straight into team preview. And they've got a nice looking team. It's made up of Tapu Koko, Duskman, Necrozma. We've got ho -Oh, Salamence, Gastron, and the ever so popular Umbrian that featured so prominently in the World Championships this summer. So, um, restricted combination, we've got ho -Oh and Duskman Necrozma, probably likely going to be uh, Ultra Necrozma as well, then the Mega on the team going to be Salamence. Speed control options, you've got ho -Oh, Salamence, uh, the Duskman Necrozma as well has access to Trick Room, and it wouldn't be too far to say it's probably carrying that because it supports the Gastrodon and the Umbrian really well. Right, what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to take advantage of our Tailwind for sure with Tornadus um, and try and shut down opposing uh, speed control because that's going to be a big key part of our strategy here. Uh, so I, I do, hmm, this is kind of difficult because Tapu Koko is really, really good against the Ho or the Salamence, uh, the Duskman, especially if it does transform into Ultra Necrozma, but Cartana is really useful against the Gastrodon. Um, Incineroar, how useful are you going to be? The fake out is very useful. Um, maybe it's better going Coco, Cartana. And I think I have to bring Kyogre. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's go for it. I don't know how, I don't know if it's too much of a mistake to not bring the Incineroar, but my opponent hasn't got fake out to kind of hinder the ability of Tornadus being able to taunt things. Um, so, in, in that respect, I feel like we're probably not too reliant on it. The only thing I would like it for would be the Intimidate for that Duskman Necrozma, uh, which we are going to see come out here. Turn one from us, and obviously the Coco does put a lot of pressure on to our Tornadus. Um, 
Now, what do we do? Do we do we go for the taunt into Duskmane? <sighs> or do we go for a Tailwind and risk my opponent getting a Trick Room up? Tricky, it's tricky. I'm gonna go Tailwind. I think Tailwinding it could be so risky, um, but at the same time, uh, and we'll Volt Switch with Coco out onto the Dusk Main and hope it doesn't go for a Trick Room. It's just I need a way to deal with Coco. That's the problem. Like, if we don't Tailwind here, um, should I bring in Kyogre? Kyogre might be good, because I don't see you going for an electric type attack into our type of Coco. Um, I think, yeah, we'll go for this, because we're, we're likely going to lose Tornadus here. I think Coco goes for Volt Switch into Tornadus, for sure. Um, hmm. And I really suspect Trick Room coming out now. If it doesn't, I mean, that that makes it so much easier for us. And we're in a really nice position going into the next turn. But I just feel like Trick Room is, is on its way. Ooh, light screen. Okay, that's fine. Um, <laughs> okay, I don't really mind that too much. But that is the problem. There's the problem right there. Um, especially after Tailwinding. Ugh. Um, hmm. And we are pretty screwed here. I think, like, one thing we could potentially do is just double protect. Um, Coco puts on a lot of pressure onto our, our Kyogre here. We'll be in this exact same position next turn, except we'll have one less turn of Tailwind to worry about. And because once the Tailwind on our side does end, we can start taking advantage of... Uh, the Trick Room. Now the Gastrodon going to come in. Uh, Tapu Koko, where are you going to go? You're going to go for a Vault Switch? Possibly, I imagine. Our nature's Madness. Okay. That's fine. The Light Screen is not ideal either, really. Um, do we try and get some damage onto Gastrodon? Like, I really want to get Cartana onto the field. We could potentially just double the Gastrodon here. Hurricane and Ice Beam. Yeah, just to get some damage onto it. Rather than switch around, I feel like Cartana is going to be very, very useful for us late game. So we're going to see an Ice Beam. Predicting maybe we switch out here. Volt Switch coming out from Coco as well into Kyogre. We take that pretty comfortably for... Our, like an electric type attack in terrain you've got to imagine that that coco is probably a salt vest um and then necrozma coming back onto the field so ice beam and hurricane should do a nice chunk of damage to this gastron uh, hurricane 100 percent accurate okay no oh, no confusion though um now we can double protect or we could potentially bring in um, Cortana. We could bring in Cortana, but then it's not really doing too much. Under the one of the things I'm, I'm kind of tempted to do is just Hurricane again into Gastrodon, but hmm, we could just double protect here. I think double protecting is probably not a bad idea, just to stall out this last turn of, of Tailwind. And that's that's gonna be okay. Of course, we're going back out. Coco going back out. Like this isn't too bad either. Um, Cortana switch in there would have been, yeah, a lot better. Like yeah, a tailwind does pitter out. It means that Kyogre is gonna be under speeding the Coco. Um, now we could potentially get rid of this Gastrodon here. I don't really want to stay in and take another Vault Switch though, that's the problem. And I think... Hmm, I'm going to bring in Coco. I don't see the Gastrodon going for an Earth Power into the Kyogre. 
I think it's probably going to Ice Beam, and they're probably going to go Volt Switch Ice Beam into Tornadus here, which could have left us open to maybe utilize Kyogre a little bit here with an Ice Beam into the Gastrodon. I think the problem with the Gastrodon here for me would be, does it carry a berry? Because we'll definitely proc it now with, with the Hurricane. So, there's a Hurricane. And there it is, yeah. Okay. Pop switch into, yeah. Double inning. Okay. This isn't the worst. Because we do get a free switch into Cortana now. And we'll see what my opponent brings in as well, which can kind of dictate what we end up bringing in. It's going to be an Necrozma. Okay. There's one turn of Trick Room. No, no. Trick Room ends. Um, yeah. Okay. Cortana. Now, I don't know what my opponent's got to bring in on the Gastrodon here. Um, could potentially double into the Necrozma, which I'm honestly tempted to do. <sighs> I just don't think a Volt Switch and a Sacred Sword are going to be enough to get the Necrozma, though. And Sacred Sword's probably the strongest attack we've got for Necrozma. It's whether or not a Thunder hits. Or whether or not the Necrozma goes Ultra Necrozma, which it could definitely do. Um, let's go Leaf Blade into Gastrodon. Should we take a punt and say it's going to go Ultra Necrozma and go Twinkle Tackle into it? I'm going to do it. Come on, Ultra Burst. Come on. Please, Ultra Burst. Come on. Oh, I thought it was there as well. This has all gone wrong. <laughs> it's gone so wrong. They're just going to trick room again. This is the thing as well. It's a good example of really overthinking. It's like what your opponent might be doing. And it would make sense in a way for me to think, okay, well, uh, we Ultra Burst here. They're probably not suspecting that we're uh, Ultra Necrozma, but uh, unfortunately, <sighs> it's all gone wrong. Uh, there's a trick room again, so we've got to get through another bunch of trick room turns. Mm. Our priority's got to be the Cartana here, though. Um, so whether or not they double into Cartana, because they definitely could with an Earth Power. It's just whether or not they've got the Earth Power into. What's the, the Necrozma? Has it even got Earth Power? That's the question. Because we could Leaf Blade into the Gastrodon. No, they're going to definitely double into the to the Cartana. Let's go for a Volt Switch out into the, the Necrozma here. I would say they definitely got Earth Power. 100%. You need it for Groudon. There's Earth Power. Okay. And double Earth Power. Yeah. The other option there would have been thundering and switching in Kyogre. Because we can't leave Cortana out on the field now. And the only thing we can do is possibly switch in Coco there. But is Coco more valuable? Maybe not. Maybe Cortana is more valuable to us than Coco. Um, it's just we can't really utilize. Kyogre here. I mean, we can. I just don't want to boost the Gastrodon. That's the problem. Um, gonna Ice Beam the Gastrodon. Hopefully, two Ice Beams and be enough to take it down. I don't know if it will, though. It just feels like this match is slowly slipping away from us. A little bit too much, maybe. And it's all about that over predict there, you know? We're just thinking a bit too much about this. Uh, we know that Trick Room... We already know that Trick Room's been shown, so that's the thing. Um, we didn't really need to, to overcommit like we did there. And this is where the mind games... Like, I'm a, such a sucker for, like, mind games. Like, uh, terrible. Uh, we're going to see the Necrozma. Ooh. 
Okay, so we're going to get a free switch into Coco. This helps us out because it helps us stall out um, these trick room turns for sure. Uh, we get a nice ice beam onto the Gastrodon here. Now I'd imagine my opponent would probably think um, I'm going to protect Coco and I'm going to go for another ice beam. Or do we go for ice beam? Will ice beam be enough to get the Necrozma from this range? Come on, move! I need. To, yeah. Um, Probably not. But do they predict we protect with Coco? That's the big thing. I just need to get damage onto the Gastrodon, I think. Uh, we could just double protect as well. But then again, it puts us just in the same position going into the next turn. I'll go for an Ice Beam into the Gastrodon. It could be quite risky though, I think. Because I feel like this is pretty obvious from us, whereas we could have just dazzled there. Oh, okay, we're going to see an Earth Power into the Coco, since you'll strike. Uh, it will be into Kyogre, but we should be able to take this. Yeah, just about. It's just about getting through these turns of Trick Room. And I think identifying this last turn of Trick Room when we can going to be quite key for us because it, I feel like my opponent is going to want to try and get their Coco back in back in now um, I really don't want to lose Coco though that's the thing I'm going to switch Cortana in and I'm going to mm, do I just do I just go for an ice beam into Gastrodon yeah, I think I'm just going to do that. Because I think, if anything, Necrozma might switch out. Although we could just see it double up. If that happens, though, we get Coco and Cortana onto the field. Because Cortana shouldn't go down here. Okay, we're going to see Gastrodon. Just go for that. Recover again. Do we see another Sunsteel Strike? Yeah, this should take Kyogre down now. But... Hmm. We might still be alright. Oh, it's into Cortana, so we're actually going to get an Ice Beam into the Gastrodon, which is pretty huge for us here, because... Oh, and the freeze! Oh. <laughs> okay, the damage is back to normal. Um, got a Leaf Blade, the Gastrodon, here. And I've got to try for that Ice Beam into the Necrozma now. Uh, no. Although... What's their other restricted? Let me remind myself. It's Hall. So we need Kyogre, really. I mean, we've got Ka got Coco as well. Uh, I just don't want... Mm. Do we go for the Sacred Sword? Do we... Nah, we go for the Leaf Blade into Gastron. Gastron's a pain. Pain. And I think... I've, I've, I feel like Ice Beam can take this Necrozma down. It's got such little health. Gastron, I'm going to switch out. Coco... Yeah, so getting damage onto Coco is going to be nice for us here. Uh, there's a Leaf Blade. Would have been better going into the Necrozma, to be honest. The Ice Beam. It's all about this Ice Beam, though. Can it take it? Yeah, it can. Okay. Whew. All right. Now the speed control's gone, which does help us out. It's getting rid of this Coco that's going to be the the, the next problem. It's going to be the hot one. Okay. Oh, uh, and Hoto is going to have, it's definitely going to have, um, right, the Coco's got Light Screen, it's got Nature's Madness, Bolt Switch, and have we seen the, the last attack on it? We've probably got Dazzle, so we can probably get rid of the Coco here. Do we switch in our own Coco? The only issue I would have here maybe would be, um... Mm, well, I don't know actually because we probably lose Cortana, whatever, which makes dealing with the Gastrodon a little bit more difficult. But I think you Brave Bird with Hot into the Kyogre slot. Or maybe Volt Switch there and then Sacred Fire into the Cortana. But it's risky doing that because if we protect with Kyogre, then you kind of waste all your moves. That's well, actually I'd speed the Coco. So that's interesting. Okay, what's this Hotel gonna do? 
Our time is running out as well. That's the other thing we need to keep in mind. Brave bird. Is it into the core core? Please be into the core core. Come on. No, into core. Donna, which we don't take, unfortunately. Okay. Um... Okay, so we've got Gastro and it's frozen, which makes it a lot easier to deal with, and Kyogre, but we can't really utilize Kyogre. And our electric terrain is gone. Until. Yeah, alright. Uh, <laughs> this isn't going to be the easiest close out at all. Do we have a Ferenium, though? Or a Ferium? I always call it a Ferenium. So dumb. Um, have we got our Z move left? No, we haven't. We've, ut we've, we've rinsed that already. Uh, electric terrain not being here is not ideal. Um, the hot or probably. Like. I've got to dazzle. I think I've got to dazzle here. I need to get rid of this gastrodon before it unthaws. I think if it hadn't been frozen, there's no way we would have won this match. With how we've played it. I think it's a winnable match for sure. But with how we've played it. I don't think. Um, okay, we're gonna see Z move. Ah, uh, is this enough to take down Kyogre behind a protect though? Without the intimidate, it probably is. Let's see. Hmm. Nah, you can't take it. Crit. I don't know if we would have taken it even without the crit. I think the next turn though, the problem is now we don't have the rain, so our thunder is not doing anything. We've got to dazzle this next turn to get rid of the gastrodon. Sacred fire is probably going to burn us and do a bunch of damage, and I don't think we're going to be able to beat the whole all with Tapu Koko. It's not looking good. I mean, it's not over yet. If thunder hits and sacred fire could miss, for sure. I think if you're whole or you're better off going for a tailwind here, if I'm like completely honest, because then you're faster than Coco um, and you've got access to recover. Um, if our moves do hit, Sacred Fire coming out does hit. And the burn, yeah. So that kind of seals the deal. And our timer is running out anyway. Um, but this it's all down to whether or not a thunder hits and whether a thunder would be enough to take the, the hot or down. I don't think it will be outside of electric terrain. In electric terrain, I think it will be a bit different. We do hit. Critical hit could be the one that takes this game for us. Nah, but hot or too bulky. Sacred fire. Oh, it missed. And it probably hasn't got protect if it hasn't got protect. <laughs> oh, this is the biggest... <laughs> The biggest boat. We'll go for the Volt Switch because we don't want to risk the Thunder, obviously, but it keeps that record intact. And we've been the, the luckiest, luckiest player, trainer ever. And uh, good game to my opponent. I feel bad for them because the freeze and then that miss, that's really unfortunate. But we'll take it because we're just... Um, <laughs> we'll take it. I'm sorry. I do apologize. That hack is horrible. Well, um, I'm going to say that we didn't deserve to win that one. Like I said earlier in the match, we overextended ourselves far too much on that Dusk main. Kind of presuming that it would go for uh, the Ultra Burst when it's already revealed what it was going to go for. So we would have been better off going for a much safer route there. And I think this matchup is definitely winnable for us. I think we just made it very difficult and we got really pulled out the mire by a lot of RNG luck. So a bit unfortunate for my opponent. But we'll wrap things up there and uh, we'll be back with more battles tomorrow. So thank you so much for tuning in. Do remember to leave a comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts on today's episodes. How bad the hacks has been and uh, if you've enjoyed it, what you've enjoyed about it, what uh, teams you would like to see going forward like i mentioned in yesterday's episode and uh, also drop a like drop a like it does really help the video out and i'll see you all for another episode tomorrow so until then take care of yourselves and bye bye